There are only three things I'm scared of. Getting old, clowns, and home buying. Buying a home is one of the most expensive, emotional, complex, time-consuming, and stressful things that most people will ever do. The actual process varies a bit from country to country, but the basic picture is the same all over the world. The stakes are super high, people are desperate to get it right, and it's nightmarishly hard to actually complete. So let's explore why home buying is so broken, why it's proven so resistant to innovation, and why now is the right time to fix it. It's worth taking a moment to reflect on just how painful buying a home can be. It's a savage market where demand outstrips supply, jargon-filled legal processes and financial products, and you need to find, work with, and most of all trust a series of specialist third parties. It adds up to a lot, especially for first-time buyers. Looking at it all through a jobs-to-be-done lens, we can start to break that pain down into a series of specific things that people need to get done in order to try and progress through it. This isn't just a problem with the actual purchase, getting the keys, things like that. There is friction at every step along the way. Whether that's figuring out your options, or working out how far your finances actually stretch, or trusting tradespeople with renovations. What's frustrating is, despite years of investment from incumbent providers, a load of that friction and pain looks no different to a decade ago. Somewhere in the region of $3 trillion worth of residential property transactions take place worldwide each year, and those numbers have doubled in the past decade. That's an absolute ton of value changing hands via awful customer experiences. It doesn't take a genius to spot the opportunity here. So, why are things still this bad? Firstly, process complexity. To deliver an end-to-end -end customer experience in home buying requires the orchestration of multiple parties, from buyers, and sellers, and lenders, and lawyers, and loads of those parties have little appetite for risk and no incentive to modernize. Secondly, legacy tech. Lots of the data and services required to deliver better customer outcomes are badly structured and running on inaccessible old systems. Integrating new solutions with those outdated systems and processes can be a nightmare. Think getting the latest edition of Call of Duty to run a 90s Game Boy. Thirdly, regulatory barriers. The home buying process is, rightly, subject to extensive regulatory scrutiny. But it means new entrants often get bogged down in a series of regulatory and compliance headaches. Let's be clear, it's really, really, really hard to innovate in this space. But it's not impossible. Around the world, new fintechs and proptechs are starting to show us a way forward. They're designing mobile-first experiences that provide customer context and connectivity. These experiences are underpinned by flexible digital architectures that unlock real-time data and use cloud-based services to enable rapid scaling. They take advantage of open finance regulation to leverage valuable customer data, and they're building APIs to standardize the exchange of data between parties. A lot of this tech was nascent decades ago, but it's starting to mature, and it's unlocking the potential for more innovation. It's enabling these new entrants who are defining new markets and new value networks. And as a result, incumbents are increasingly going to find themselves going toe-to-toe -to -toe with new, different types of business. Take a look at someone like Mojo Mortgages in the UK. They're building out a comprehensive digital ecosystem made up of adjacent providers and offering capabilities aligned to the things their customers actually need to get done. They're building out from mortgage provision to solve a broader range of jobs to be done for their customers and all in a joined up, integrated way. It's not hard to project forwards from a network of partners like Mojo's to more of a seamless end-to-end -end experience for customers. There's also Oh My Home in Singapore. They offer everything from property listings, viewing bookings, all the way through to lending, conveyancing, moving and renovation services, all under one brand. To compete with tightly integrated ecosystems of partners, knitted together to deliver seamless end-to-end -end experiences for customers, players in the space are going to have to get good at partnering fast. It's too much to do here, and it's too complex for even the biggest players with the most resources to work through in isolation. They're going to have to find adjacent businesses that they can leverage to serve more of their customers' jobs to be done more effectively. Of course, that's easier said than done. In the words of John F. Kennedy, partnership is a process, not a posture. Relentlessly focusing on your customers' jobs to be done, finding and working with the right partners, 
evolving business models to compete with asymmetrical competitors, none of this stuff is easy. But they're about to become the core competencies needed to stay in the game. And anyone intending to buy a home in the next few years is going to feel the benefit. To recap, home buying is broken. Really broken. Historically, stubbornly resistant to change, but increasingly, not beyond redemption and about to look real different, real fast. The players that partner to deliver better customer outcomes are likely to win out. For the players that don't, it's likely game over. Bye.